students. Um, <laughs> that's the definition of humble beginnings. Uh, good evening. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for you to have me here. Uh, I am an actor in Los Angeles, um, but I am from, uh, from Worcester, and so I suppose it makes one wonder as, as Hollywood changed him, you know. Uh, I, I can assure you uh, that my uh, assistant, my driver, and my housekeeper have all assured me, <laughs> completely unprovoked, uh, that I'm very, very down to earth, um, especially considering all of my talents and achievements. <laughs> the point is, I'm still me. I'm still me. Uh, in fact, according to my plastic surgeon, I'm still more than 87.3% original parts. <laughs> so, uh, but tonight, uh, you know, I'm going to speak a little from the heart, mostly to uh, the, the students back there, because I think that uh, that's the most important thing. Um, usually when I speak sincerely, I do it from a teleprompter, um, and this is very foreign to me, uh, that's why I have something in front of me. Uh, I'm usually uh, given lines, um, and uh, then I say them in a faux, authentic way in order to get you to buy things that you don't need to feel good about it. Um, but tonight I'm gonna uh, read from a piece of paper. Um, so I'd like to begin with a quotation. Um, I googled how to give a good speech and uh, the results indicated that good speeches always contain uh, quotations. So um, as an aside, if, if you ever Google how to give a good, don't click on the suggested terms that come up. Uh, the comedian Martin Lowell once said, uh, show business is just like high school, except you get paid. And this sentiment has certainly proven uh, to be pretty true for me, and it seems apropos for tonight, uh, because Life is really a fractal. Fractals are those things that when you examine them from a great distance and you pull closer and closer, the shape doesn't change. Life is like that. Uh, the first job I ever auditioned for in, in Hollywood was a, a show called That 70s Show. And after the initial round of casting, found myself at the callback uh, for producers. Uh, which was like the final uh, step before getting cast. And I just, I found myself in this really scary, unfamiliar situation. Uh, I was just lined up against a wall, uh, and everybody was just sort of like going into a room uh, for 45 seconds and then emerging slightly more sweaty and, and, and leaving. And, you know, you were just ticking down, ticking down until it was your turn. And everybody in line uh, that was vying for the same part, I just knew that they were more qualified than I was. They'd been there longer, they had longer resumes. Uh, some even looked the part more than me. The, the character I was auditioning for was in red, and some of these people had red hair. The guy in front of me literally was in the movie Dead Poet Society with the guy who played Red Foreman on that 70s show, and he had red hair. So I was like, I'm, there's, I should not be here. There's no reason, I have no chance. Um, and you know, I, I like to refer to auditioning as kind of like getting shot out of a cannon. Now I say this never having actually been shot out of a cannon, and it's not meant to be just disrespectful to any carnies or circus folk who may be present tonight. And being Wayne County, it probably is. <laughs> but it's what I imagine being shot out of a cannon is like. You know, it's all of this pressure, this nervousness, this anticipation. For, for minutes, if not hours, and then bang, it's just, it's over in a few seconds. And in that moment, I just kind of thought, wow, this feels exactly like speech team. Like going into a final round, you know? It, all that pressure and stress, feeling confident that you didn't have a prayer of winning, wondering why you put yourself through this hell, knowing that Everybody was wondering how did this person get here, you know, and feeling also like you didn't do as well as you wanted to do. Felt the same. And then you win, sometimes. 
Uh, and from that, I learned that, uh, you know, I thought I bombed uh, and I ended up getting the role. And it's a great example uh, of how we are not the best evaluators of our own work and, uh, and how we appear to the viewer, to the audience. You know, you remember when you got off uh, stage in the high school play and you kicked yourself because you like flunked the line or you missed a cue or something and you were just kicking yourself. And then you talked to your folks and friends afterward and they were just completely unaware. The audience, uh, audience absorbs your performance and the work itself like a, like a wave crashing over them. They walk away with an impression, you know, a, a color, like an emotional picture of what they just experienced. They don't see the details only like an overall shape. So remember that the difference between what you consider your best performance and your worst performance is all but imperceptible to people who are watching. They're either in or they're out. So don't fixate on it. Do what you do and let the chips fall where they may. And always remember showbiz is like high school. When you're in high school, like you know, maybe for example or whatever, but you're you know, you're maybe trying to get a date with someone and your instinct is to round off your edges. You say, I need to be normal. I need to be conventional. I can't let my idiosyncrasies peek through. I gotta present this version of myself that looks appealing and attractive to the outside world. But what ends up happening is you end up crippling your potential for greatness. And creative enterprises are just like that. It is yeah, you may get a bunch more opportunities if you're conventional, but you're hiding what makes you special. So, you know, if there's like some girl that you uh, want to go out with and, uh, and you play Dungeons and Dragons and you hide that part of yourself because you think nobody's going to like me if I do that, and you're potentially missing out on that one person who's looking for that exact thing, you know? If you're a one-armed, midget, bearded lady, and someone comes looking for that, and you're the only game in town, but you use a prosthetic, you shave, and you wear lips to blend in with everybody, you never get the game. And I say this with no disrespect if there are any carnies or circus <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line is you gotta be strong and secure enough to be yourself, personally and creatively, with the faith that the people who are gonna appreciate that will eventually come around, and you're gonna be the one to provide that. After I got cast on that 70s show, I didn't work again for seven years in the entertainment industry. Pause for gasps. <laughs> I didn't work for seven years, I didn't work another job for seven years. And two questions that inevitably come up uh, when I mention this uh, to people is, uh, well, what happened, why? And, and I have no idea, I really don't. I just. I just knew that I got hired once to do something. Uh, so uh, whatever I was hired for that first time around, I still had that and that's not going away and that's gonna be there if somebody decides to come calling again. And the other question is, did you ever think about packing it up? Um, ever think about leaving? And I remember at the time, I, my dad who's here uh, asked me uh, how many years I intended on staying in Los Angeles if things didn't work out, and I didn't really think about it. I, I just, I found myself just answering honestly, and I was, I don't have a timetable. You know, this is this is what I want to do, and I'm going to keep on trying. And, um, you know, because what if you leave town the very day before your proverbial ship is going to come in? You know, that would be pretty stupid. That would be unfortunate because you don't know when your next chance is going to be. you got to be there when it comes around and you have to be ready for it. So you stay positive, you stay healthy. It's like constantly being in training for a marathon that you just don't know the date. And you can't derive your happiness from how your career is going. You have to see your career sort of die in your head and be okay with it. Because if you can do that, everything else is just gravy. If you feel good and you feel strong, if you own yourself, that's attractive to the outside world. That avails you of more opportunities, which makes you feel good. And that's how a positive cycle of momentum is created. So, um, come to close here. Uh, one of the other things I've been asked is if you go back and tell your younger self any piece of advice, knowing what you know now, what would that be?
happy, and that is simply have more fun and worry less. Don't be afraid, enjoy yourself. Don't live your life in a constant panic, like that you're gonna get cancer, you know? Because chances are you won't, and then you don't wanna look back at 95 and dying of natural causes and go, well, crap, I was worried the whole time and I could've been having fun, nothing ever happened. So have fun, enjoy yourself, release yourself of fear. As the great Bill Hicks said, this is just a ride. So don't be afraid. Um, I'd like to say a few thank yous before I go. Um, there's too many people to thank in this category individually, so this is sort of a catch-all. I'd like to thank all the people who encouraged me to get into this, whatever this is. I think we all know what this is, creative life, I guess. Um, and by that, I mean all the people who took me figuratively or literally by the shoulder, looked me square in the eye and said, no, I'm serious, you're good, you should do this. Because that is the greatest gift that you can give to someone who needs to hear it. So do that for people. And if you're on the receiving end, don't listen to everybody. Because not everyone's opinion should be weighed the same. Some people like, give bad advice and don't know what they're talking about. But if somebody you respect takes you by the shoulder and looks you in the eye and tells you you should do this, take it to heart. I'd like to thank my parents for blindly encouraging me. They didn't say, hey, you're creative, go do some art stuff. Uh, you're really good at that, we think you should pursue that. No, they, they, they made me do soccer, t-ball, you know, industrial arts, everything. They, they threw it like spaghetti on the wall and wait to see what sticks. And, um, but the nice thing about that is I got to try everything. I knew I was sort of good at the creative stuff, and I also knew that I was very ill-suited for everything else, so that was very beneficial. I'd like to thank Mr. Patterson, um, and uh, not just for the obvious theatrical instruction and encouragement, and I thanked him uh, privately uh, for just all, all that he's done. Uh, but I'd like to thank him for showing me the value of picking an achievable look and maintaining it. <laughs> this man has worked exactly the same for 30 one. years. <laughs> Basically, have Ken and him and Larry King. I'll put Dan Adams in there, sure. I saw him. It was great, but like, well done, sir. Uh, and lastly, I would like to thank uh, Little Manuel, the son of my housekeeper, for composing this speech for me. In exchange for a letter of recommendation to the Santa Lucia Middle School of Pomona, I really couldn't have done this without him. Gracias, Manuel. This is really a great honor, which I will place with pride next to my 2009 Golden Cobb Award for Best Rising B-Movie Actor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a chocolate waiting for me at Christmas Run Park. 